ready. Okay, well, actually, first of all, if you could introduce yourself and explain your role. Perfect. So I'm Anthony Rodriguez. I'm the production director of Patron. Been working with the company for 15 years now. So it's been a very interesting journey of learning about tequila, be passionate about it and spread the word. And like, how would you describe the tequila market as it is right now, um, as a global market? How's it, how does it sort of fare? Well, it, it's booming, but it's booming mainly driven by the US, but we have a huge opportunity globally because this trendy situation in the US is, is making noise and is helping us to open doors easily in other cultures, in other countries, which at the end is, they are eager to understand what's behind tequila. And the good news is that we're eager to show what's behind tequila. So it's, it's a good combination, a good problem to, to have right now. And then in terms of education, what are the things you have to educate people on around tequila, when it, especially when you get outside of the Mexico and US markets, which are obviously sort of more established and longer established? Well, on tequila, it's really complex spirit. I always say that in my opinion is the most complex spirit in the world. Why I say that? Because it's a start with the raw material. We have basically one raw material, which is Weber Blue Agave. And this plant takes up to seven years to be fully mature and be ready to be transformed into tequila. So that's a long term and a lot of complexity on planning. And that complexity, it's even higher nowadays that you are facing double digits growth year by year. So it's a complex situation. That, that one's it, what point that makes tequila really complex and magical. Secondly, once you harvest the agave, you have multiple choices on how to transform that agave into tequila. The way you cook the agave, the way you extract the sugars, the way you ferment, you distill, the way you age the tequila. So there's several decisions, several variables, and you can end up with a variety of expressions in the glass, depending on how you process that agave. So this is something really specific on tequila. And I will say that way you can find several brands and I guarantee you that you can taste different brands and you will get a slightly different descriptor, a slightly different flavor profile, something that you might like, something that you might not. But I always say to people that there's no such a thing that I don't like tequila. It's, you just need to find the right one for your palate. Because if you like something bright, something strong, you can start with the Blanco tequila, the silvers. If you like something sweet, something with heavy body, you can move up to the extra añejos. So depending on what your flavor profile, we can offer you one tequila that will fit your preference. Yeah, I agree. I agree totally. I, I think a lot of people say that, oh, I just don't like tequila. And you kind of have, as you say, it's, it's about explaining that there isn't one taste and it's, it can be very different. And what about when people, you know, people always say to me, oh, no, I can't drink it because I just get a headache. It, it makes me feel bad, which, again, I think is a funny, it, you know, it, it's funny because when you break it down, you kind of work out that generally they've probably drunk a lot of other things with it or whatever. What, what's your response when people say that? That, that's an interesting situation. And, and there are several points of view. One is that we cannot hide that we come from a history when usually tequilas were not as premium as are right now. And I mean, not because of the price point or, or the marketing on the brand, because of the cares on the process. So there's people, there's still people out there that their first encounter with tequila was a very bad quality tequila in which is gonna be a back headache the next day. So first is you gotta explain to people and I always say that forgive us for the old memories of bad quality tequila, just please give us the opportunity to try something premium, something well-made and then we'll talk about it. So that's one end. And secondly, you say it right, I don't know how much you drink and I don't know if you were just drinking tequila in really sweet cocktails, so that is it's not only tequila, it's whatever spirit that you put a lot of sugar on it, you will suffer the next day. So it's, it's trying to understand what happened the night before, and then I can try to work on that. But I can tell you that a well-made tequila 
is not gonna make you softer the next day. No, I agree. Especially like tequila, tequila and soda. I, if I drink that all evening, I'm fine. <laughs> I, 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 I have my own personal rule that for every glass of tequila, I'm gonna have a glass of water. If I follow that rule, I might visit the restroom a lot that night, but I'll be happy the next morning. So it's it it always work always works. I think that's a good that's good advice. Um, and then in terms of like innovations that are going on now, is there lots of experiment experimentation around the expressions of tequila? Is that sort of where we're seeing innovation? Where are the main areas where um, experimentation is happening? Innovation, it's very interesting on tequila right now because there's two different trends from my point of view. One, it's moving into what else we can do to tequila, which is mostly on the aging side, like experimenting on finishing in different barrels or even spending the whole aging process in a specific barrel, different kind of woods, different kind of uh, proof on the barrel, different kind of temperature. So we are moving into that direction and also exploring how far you can age tequila. Because key differentiation here, we are not talking about whiskeys in which the main flavor is coming from the wood. Tequila by itself in a Blanco expression has already a big personality. So when you age tequila, you are not looking to, to get over that, you're looking to complement that. So it's, it's very tricky to manage the aging on tequila. So that's one end to move into the innovation. But another interesting way that the industry is innovating is, I will say on the very details on the production process. Lots. People nowadays with the booming on tequila, there's a lot of people that is just new to the tequila industry, but there's a lot of people also that was already into tequila category, and now they are becoming experts. They want to know more about how it's made, where the tequila has been harvested, how the tequila has been, how the extraction has been made. So there's also innovation into that channel. Like, being transparent and say, okay, I'm gonna innovate with a tequila that is agave 100% of this specific area, or that is being produced 100% with this specific method of production. So there's, I will describe it in summary as expanding the scope on tequila, but also just open the doors to the specific product of, of product, process of production. So there's two ways in which you can play with with the tequila category. I think that's you know true of all the drinks category and that people want to know more about where their drinks are coming from. It's, it's there's much more um, interest, isn't there now? In you know, it, is it sustainable? Has it come from here? What's happened? What's the process? And people, whereas before they would have probably just bought stuff. A lot of people now want to know these things. And I think sustainability is another good area. I think where it seems like there's quite a lot of innovation going on in terms of how can we re recycle or reuse? How can it, do you think that side is also a growing innovation, innovative side? Of course, and, and I will call it that it's a big differentiator in which consumers locally will dig more because nowadays that there's a lot of, I mean, almost every week you have a new celebrity tequila brand coming out and you gotta understand that to give you specific numbers, there's roughly 160 distilleries to produce tequila into the Appalachian of origin territory and that are registered and certified by the CRT and everything that needs to happen. But there's over thousands of brands. What this means is that there's several brands coming out of the same place. And in some cases, there is good effort behind, and I mean, reaching the distillery, run your own process, get your own profile. But in some other cases, it's just somebody buying liquid, and put it in a different bottle. So when you have cases like that, I can tell you that there's, no, there's nothing to find in sustainability because it's just a transaction of buying liquid and sell it. In our case at Patron that we have one brand, one distillery, sustainability has been the key since day one. And it has been a key because all the growth that we have experienced in the years. You cannot grow the, the, the amounts that we are growing if we are not sustainable. So it's a key component and luckily, for example, bartenders, which is a huge influential community in this industry, they are digging into that. 
And, and I can tell you that we receive a lot of bartenders into the distillery. Well, not for the last year, sadly, but hopefully that can reopen soon. And something that all of them are surprised is about the sustainability efforts, because you can see that the size of our production facility is pretty much the same size of our waste treatment facility. I mean, we take that seriously, like creating compost, recycling water, and sustainability is even not only about the environment, but it's also about the people. How you train the people, how you educate the people in order to be self-sufficient in talent. Because for process is a lot of hand labor. It's hand labor intensive. I can tell you that we are 2000 people right now at the facility. So with the growth that we are experimenting, we need more talent. And we are in a small town of Mexico, it's called Atotonilco. So it's not that you can get engineers or high qualified people easily. And our policy is rather develop internal talent by training, by education. So you give more opportunities, you have sustainability on the environmental side of it, you have sustainability on talent, and of course, sustainability on how you source your agave. Yeah, I think it's all, all of that's very important. Um, are you noticing more, just because I've spoken to a couple of women in the, in the sector, during the process of doing this um, article, and it seems like there's there's more women coming into tequila. Is that something that's changing? And obviously, you know, traditionally it would have been much more of a male dominated area. Yeah, I mean, what I can tell you about from the operation perspective, we are of course getting more women involved, which is amazing. And we've been changing paradigms, uh, changing the, the rules on what just positions that used to be male dominated is like, it doesn't have to be like that. And for, to give you an example on the production line, supervision, the, the supervisors on the production line, five years ago were only men. Nowadays we are like 60, 40. And the amount of talent that we have won with that decision, it's amazing because it brings another perspective and, and it complements the, the whole work, the whole team in a much better way. So we are being open into that. And you as you slowly, you have seen as an industry, much more women involved, like as, as master distillers, as people operating the plants. So it's, it's good that it is an industry that is opening the doors for that. No, definitely. I found that really interesting. Um, and you, you briefly mentioned about the celebrity that, you know, there's, there's has be become a lot of more of these sort of celebrity endorsed brands. And I know, you know, some of them are probably being done well and some of them aren't. You know, I'm sure we can't call, put all in one category. But as a whole, do you think, you know, are they a positive, positive in the way that they encourage people who wouldn't normally want to drink tequila to drink? Are they, you know, are they making it more accessible or do you, is there more downsides than good sides, sir? Uh, um, that, that them coming into the market. No, I, I agree with you that there's a positive impact because at the end it's not, the way I see the things, it's not that we're fighting among tequilas. We are fighting to, to show the world what tequila is. And, and, and I told you before that there's different flavors profiles in tequilas. Somebody that like more the vegetable side of it, somebody that like more the sweet part of it. So. All these celebrities, I see that as a positive because they are bringing attention into the category. And then, of course, it's our work to show what we are doing. If somebody is helping us to bring the attention, okay, now that you have it, go and talk about why people should stay in the category. And so I see it, it is a positive situation. Of course, it's creating some challenges, for example, on the supply of the agave, because what is happening? In our case, that we've been here for several years, several generations, several cycles of plantation, we have that secure. But what happened when somebody pitch a business to a celebrity and suddenly, boom, it, it, it worked? They didn't have agave planted seven years ago. So that is coming and, and, and harvesting agave that might be for somebody else. So that, that's just creating a, a quite a 
complex situation as an industry, but I can tell you that right now, we are in a pretty balanced situation. Not a lot of agave, but pretty much enough agave for everybody. So it's just a matter of do the right thing, have long-term contracts like the ones we have. So if you do that, you are not in a hurry. But the people that has not a good planning with all the celebrities coming in, that's a challenge to, to get over. But at, at the end, I think it's, it's a positive impact. Yeah, it sounds like being in a hurry is something you can't be in tequila and full stop. I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> I think that's another one of the myths I think people don't understand. You know, I guess it, it is more expensive than in lots of cases than, you know, a premium vodka or a premium gin can be cheaper because the production costs are lower. And I think that's people things people also don't understand is, you know, that how long it takes to get to your bottle. <laughs> And, and not only the, the, the cost, I mean, the constraints that for some other spirits is like, you can have different sources or you can even buy liquids, whatever, and then finish the product with any specific process and done. In our case, is one specific raw material, is one specific area, is at least six to seven years to wait for that to be ready. And in some cases, if you're talking of H tequilas, it's, either extra six months, a year, or three years. Or just to give you a, a, another example, one of our last innovations was an extra Ñejo of 10 years age. So just imagine how long, how much time had to happen in order for you to have that bottle. Seven years for the agave, a week of the production process, 10 years of the aging. So it's a lot of time in order to enjoy and sip a good tequila. So that's why a lot of things that, again, with education, if people understand that, it's a huge win for the industry. And, and, I, and I have witnessed people that when you start talking about it, even their, change, their, their face is changing when they are sipping the tequila because it's like really appreciating what's behind that, that glass and, and I always describe like it's falling in love with the glass, like understanding everything that is behind it. And you enjoy the experience even more. You're gonna, I can tell you, you're gonna drink less, but you're gonna drink better. So that's something that we are eager for, to talk to people. So we have more people enjoying the tequila in the best way. Oh, that sounds great. Um, and then in terms of what people are doing, into, uh, I guess, bartenders and what are you seeing at the moment? I, I guess people have moved away from just margaritas and shots. So what, what are the things that people are doing with, in bars that's exciting and the different mix, mixes that are happening right now for tequila? It's, it's an, um, the cocktail scenery, it's a good tool for the tequila in order to open other markets. Like for example, Europe or Asia, it's easier to get into the cocktail scenery. And what we have seen is like globally, if you just open the doors to experimentation, you are surprised. I mean, I can see like you say margarita, which is a typical thing, but I can see, for example, Manhattan's old fashions made with tequila and people is like, wait a second, you can do that with tequila? Of course, just an well-aged tequila and you'll be surprised. So we have, have to that we have um, initiative is called Perfectionist in which we bring bartenders for all over the world to create cocktails on tequila. And, and the idea is what we ask is first learn about the brand or story or process, why we do the things we do. And then we would like to for you to take that and take your culture. Some Japanese, I remember two years ago, we have a Japanese bartender that created a cocktail on tequila and matcha and some specific tea tools. It was like a full tea ceremony for a cocktail with tequila. It's like, it's really impressive how you can take the, the Mexican culture, the tequila, add whatever country's culture and boom, a good cocktail, a good experiment can happen. And we've been surprised with that. I mean, last year in the competition, it was a London bartender, which was an, it's an Italian girl that is moved to London to bartender. 
and create a cocktail with tomato and something from the Italian cuisine and put tequila on it and, and great cocktail. So those kind of experiences, it's a well approach for the consumer because it's, and you say yeah, that at the beginning. Some people just say, hey, get a shot of tequila and they will run away. But what if I, I try this cocktail? Oh, it is light, how it is made. Da, 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 and tequila. What tequila? And, and then the conversation starts happening. I always say that one of the side effects of tequila is that it makes friends. Because you can talk a lot about tequila that once you start sipping tequilas, you are guaranteed that you'll be friend of your neighbor in the bar. No, absolutely, absolutely. Now, is there anything you want to tell me that's going, a Patron doing anything at the moment that's exciting, that's new? They've got, what's the priorities and goals for the next, you know, for the coming couple of years? What exciting things are going on? <laughs> a lot of excitement, a lot of movement. And one of our priorities of well, different ones first is keep, keep the presence that we have in the US, but we really have a priority to expand that globally and to introduce tequila to different countries, different markets. And the big challenge now moving into my role, which is operations is increase the capacity, increase the volume. Because something that, that Patron has done since the beginning is just replicate the same process. We start as a very small distillery. Nowadays, I can tell you that we are 14 small distilleries side by side. So basically, at some point, it's a challenge because it takes time. It takes for us, it takes around a year to start a new model. So the complexity on the planning is even higher. But the benefit is that it's easier to control, it's easier to achieve consistency because it's just more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. So the challenge that we have is keep the pace with the grow on the demand, win the, the global market on tequila and start talking about that and also increase the education. So there's a lot of things about transparency. I mean, transparency for us is a key because one of our differentiators is the process of production and all the extra steps we take in order to get the flavor that we like. So one of our priorities also is bring as many people as possible to the distillery and open doors and say, go see, go talk to people, open any door, taste the tequilas from here, taste the tequilas after the aging, after everything that happened, and know what we're doing and why we're doing. Another of the messages that we are pushing a lot right now is that we are 100% free of additives. Because by law on tequila, you are able to use additives. I mean, it's not forbidden, it's not against the law, but the way we see the things is a shortcut. And it's putting something artificial into something as magical as tequila is, is not good in our way of thinking. So we are doing the extra, extra steps to stay additive free and we are doing the extra steps to communicate that and make sure that people is taking the decision based on knowledge. Like, okay, I wanna drink that. Perfect. Just make sure that you drink that because you like the flavor profile and you understand where this flavor profile is coming from. If after knowing all of that, you're happy, great. If you need more information, just ask and make a very well informed decision on what you're going to drink, what you want to put in your, in, in your body. Well, that's really good. I think that's a, a good policy to have. Um, um, is there anything else? Well, I'm trying to think what we haven't touched on. We've looked at most of the innovation, most of the myth busting. We've talked about sustainability. We've talked about cocktails, industry changing. I think I think we've covered everything. We've done pretty well there. Um, that's great. Thank you so much. Good. Really, really. Thank you very helpful. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Luis, and and and. Thank you for, for giving us your space to talk about that as an industry in general, as Patron, because truly tequila is magical. I mean, <laughs> hopefully you can visit us soon. Yes. Rachel is gonna take care of that, but. <laughs> yes, definitely. There's, there's no way that we can explain what is happening here. Yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? It's, it's, it's hard, the 